Well, it's been 13 really plus years in the making, but we finally have it on the big screen, Avatar The Way of Water. guys, Dan here. This is Dan Reviews. Welcome to my pretty spoiler-free review for the new movie Avatar, The Way of Water. This is uh, in theaters now, and of course, uh, you know, it's a theater exclusive. James Cameron wants you to see this uh, on the biggest screen possible, the IMAXs, the 3Ds, the whole kit and caboodle. Um, and the original came out in 2009, of course, and now we've got the new uh, Avatar The Way of Water, and then we're getting Avatar 3, which was shot at the same time as this, I guess next Christmas is, is the plan for that. But in any event, uh, before we get into my thoughts on this movie, uh, I want to welcome you into Dan Reviews. Thank you for finding this video. We've got tons of movie and TV reviews to check out, and uh, please consider subscribing down below there. We'd love to have you aboard, uh, or like or comment on this video. That helps, too. All right, let's get into this movie. Um, so... Let's talk full disclosure first. I am not a huge fan of the original Avatar. Uh, when I saw it in theaters in 3D on Christmas Day 2009, um, I will admit, it's still to this day probably, uh, it is one of the most you know visually breathtaking and stunning experiences uh, in, a, in a movie theater in my life. I mean, I was blown away by uh, this movie and the visual aspect of it, right? But then I watched it again, uh, a couple of years later on DVD at home on my little, you know, 40-inch TV. And uh, it was like, oh, okay, this movie's actually bad. Got it. Um, the, the script is horrible for that movie, you know, and that's that's sort of the, the whole bit. Like, visually amazing, but where's the script? Where's the characters? You know, where's anything that isn't just ripping off, you know, Fern Gully, Dances with Wolves, you know, uh, 50 other movies. Uh, all right, so does any of that get changed with Avatar The Way of Water? Well, let's let's uh, start by talking about uh, some of the actors because most uh, of of the, the big cast from the original uh, does return here. You've got Sam Worthington once again doing uh, Jake Sully, uh, Zoe Saldana as Natriti, and then Sigourney Weaver is in this but not playing the same character. Um, I, I, we do sort of uh, see that character on a video, uh, so Weaver did do the voice for that, but uh, she's actually playing uh, Jake and Detriti's adopted teenage daughter uh, called Kiri, so she's doing like a, a teenage bit here, um, but you know, it works because it's all motion capture and she's a blue person, so you can't really tell that, oh, okay, this woman's in her, you know, whatever, 60s, um, but uh, some newcomers include Kate Winslet, to this, of course, uh, you know, big James Cameron uh, person. She goes way back with Titanic, um, and then also uh, James Flatters um, is is getting some some buzz for this movie as uh, Natium, who is uh, Jake and Detriti's uh, oldest child, um, who was a baby in the original. Was it, is that right? I, I I don't know. I I, I haven't. I've only seen the first Avatar twice, and it's been a long time. But I, I think he was a baby that character, and so then in this one he's like, you know, fourteen or something. Um, all right. So not once, but twice in this movie, did they say, and I quote, "The way of water has no beginning and no end." Well, I mean, hit the nail on the head right there, because the movie The Way of Water also seems like it has no beginning and no end. It has no beginning because, uh, you know, we had the first movie, and it basically is just sort of a, uh, a play off of that. Um, and it has no end because it's three hours and 13 minutes, which is, uh, I guess, about as long as Titanic, really. But, um, but it's way too long for this movie. It seems like it does never end. And it also, you could say... The Way of Water has no ending because it really is all building up to number three. At the end there, you know, of course, there's a fight, as always. Um, and then, you know, it, it really is is clearly, you know, paving the way. But, uh, you know, for a movie like this, I can kind of forgive it because they shot two and three back to back. So it's not like, you know, fingers crossed, this does well, let's make a third. No, we know there's a third coming. So uh, that's, that's, that's fine, I guess. But... As a result, um, you know, I do think the way of water has no beginning and no end. So, uh, you know, couldn't couldn't have hit that nail any harder on the head. Um, but uh, this movie does not need to be three hours and 13 minutes. You know, if you broke it down, and I did, uh, because I, you know, look, it's Christmas time. I'm, I got more hours at work. I'm working like 70 hour weeks here. I don't have time to sit down and watch a three plus hour movie. 
uh, all at once. But luckily, because I work at a theater, uh, you know, I, I sort of broke it up into three parts, you know, watch kind of an hour at a time. So, uh, you know, that actually did help the pacing a little bit for me. But, uh, I, you know, imagining I was sitting there the whole time just watching and watching. Um, the first, like, really two hours feels way longer than it is. But then, you know, Act 3 gets into it and off to the races. You know, the, then the, the fights are starting to progress and everything is, you know, moving at kind of a breakneck speed and we're actually getting a little bit of that emotion that I think uh, we were missing from the first couple hours. Um, so, you know, the, the final third feels like, you know, a half hour instead of an hour. So, um, <laughs> but I, the, the buildup, it's just, it, there's absolutely no reason for this movie to be so long. It's indulgent. It's obnoxious. Uh, two and a half, I think, would have been okay for this movie. Um, but realistically, it retains all of the same problems of the original Avatar. Now, I will admit uh, you know, my theater does not have uh, 3D. You know, I, I work at a small independent theater. We don't do the 3D. We certainly don't have IMAX. Um, and so I, unlike the first movie that I did watch in 3D, I didn't, I was not able to watch this in 3D. Um, but, you know, I, I get it. I'm, I'm sure it looks amazing. And I did the Avatar ride in Disney. And so I, I got it. I know what it looks like in, in 3D. Um, and it's, it is gorgeous. There's no doubt about it. It is breathtakingly gorgeous. But we all knew that going in. That wasn't ever going to be in question. You know, James Cameron obviously um, has an eye for this sort of thing and, and the design and, and the look and all of that. You know, he's been doing that since the 80s, right? But is it that much better than the original in terms of looks? Now, again, I would have to maybe see it in 3D or in an IMAX to really compare and contrast, but it's also been 13 years since I saw the original. So what I really remember that well anyway i don't know um i think <laughs> that i was hoping for something that was even more mind-blowing than the original and this to me was not um again maybe if i saw it in 3d I, I would feel differently about it but you know a movie also has to stand on its own merits here um and i don't think this one does the script is still terrible the plot is still, you know, pretty basic. Um, instead of, you know, save the rainforest like the first Avatar, this one is save the whales. But it's all kind of the same thing. Even the villain is the same. We couldn't even get a different villain for this movie. So it's it's all just so basic and disappointing in the regard that visually it doesn't look that much more stunning than the first one. Now, I will say, yes, it probably is the best-looking film since the first Avatar. Probably. Um, and, and when you consider that, okay, you know, the, you know the, the actors did all these underwater scenes and they were holding their breath and Kate Winslet broke a, a world record for, you know, filming a scene underwater in whatever it was, seven minutes or something, um, you know, holding her breath that long. All right, cool. And, and look, I gave Top Gun Maverick points for being authentic and, and you know, doing you know, the, the flight scenes realistically and, and all of that, not using a lot of CGI. Obviously, there's a ton of CGI here, but it's more motion capture, so it's a little bit of a different animal. And so they're actually filming the scenes underwater. So look, I'll give it credit for that. I will. Um, but it still doesn't help that the story stinks. Um, you know, and the dialogue is not very good. And the character development is almost non-existent. There's a few times where, okay, we, you know, we're going to get emotional and we want to really wring these emotions and, and people are screaming about, you know, those that they've lost and, and whatever. Um, but, you know, other than Jake Sully, I couldn't tell you a person's name in this movie. I had to read it from the Wikipedia just now. Um, but, like, they say Jake Sully about 100 times. I don't, They barely ever say any of the other characters' names, so you don't really know them. Um, and... You know, because they're all just blue people, it's kind of like boy blue people and girl blue people. And I get a little confused, you know. I can tell sometimes if, oh, with Sigourney Weaver's voice, we can tell that. And she's younger in this, so okay. But like, you know, and I know Kate Winslet's voice enough. But, uh, you know, a lot of these people, I just, are, they're just kind of the same character to me. Um, and, and so that doesn't help either. You know, you got to give people more identifying characteristics than, oh, we're just all blue. Um, and I just didn't find that development. I really didn't. Um, so this is frustrating because I, I look, I didn't necessarily want to love this movie because I think the first one is way overrated. 
Um, but this is going to get nominated for, you know, all the technical awards. And because of that, it may get a Best Picture nomination. Um, that's usually the way it works. You know, if, if a movie does all of the, the visual components and the sound effects and all of that, you know, Mad Max Fury Road and Hugo and, uh, you know, usually there's one movie every year that takes all the, the awards in the technical aspects, or at least is nominated, and they get a Best Picture nomination, regardless of really if, if the story is good or not. Like, something like Gravity, well, that was a great movie. Uh, you know, this, maybe not, but I, I think it probably will get a Best Picture nomination because, technically, it is gorgeous. Do we need three-plus hours of gorgeous? No, we don't. I, I got enough of it from the ride in Disney that was like two minutes or something. Um, so, yeah, trim this movie for sure. Give me a better script. Give me better characters. Uh, you know, give me a better story. Give me a different villain, for Christ's sake. So, yes, beautiful, sure. But we knew that. So, uh, I'm a little bit torn on my grade. It's certainly not a great grade. It's it's average, but how average are we going here? Um, I, I guess I will give it a small benefit of the doubt because I do think it's probably the most gorgeous movie I've seen since the original Avatar. So, on a technical standpoint, they got a lot of things right, uh, but every other area, it just falters. So, uh, uh, I, I guess I'll give it the plus. I'll give it a C plus for Avatar The Way of Water. Um, people are going to love this, you know, although it did not do as well opening weekend as certain other movies this year. Uh, mostly the Marvel ones, I guess, but... And I think it opened right around Top Gun Maverick. So it did not blow the box office away. And I know the first one didn't either. But the entire landscape of uh, theaters have changed a lot since uh, 2009. So I don't think it's going to have that, you know, going to be number one run for three months or whatever it was, you know, back then. I just don't see that happening this time. I think people are going to see it. They're going to enjoy it or they won't. And then there you go. It'll be forgotten uh, you know, until the next one comes out. So, all right. Thank you for watching. We'll see everybody next time on Damn Reviews. Bye.